This video is brought to you by Sayerite. Visit Sayerite.com for all your project supplies, tools, and instructions. In this video, we're going to show you how to make a motorcycle cover. By making your own cover, you can pick the fabric of your choice and you can build the cover to fit your custom configuration. In this video, we'll be using Evolution Blockhead Fabric from Sayerite. Evolution Fabric is designed with a four layer construction to ensure a strong, flexible, breathable cover with a very soft inner lining. In this tutorial video, we'll show how to determine the fabric required, how to create a patterning frame, how to pattern. We will also be adding pleats to give the pattern shape, how to sew up the motorcycle cover, and then how to create a sleeve for a drawstring or a shock cord. Let's get started and show you how to make your own motorcycle cover. The first step in making a motorcycle cover is to determine the amount of fabric that will be required to make it. Deciding how to pattern is half the battle. From front to rear, we'll have one panel that goes over the top made out of three separate patterns. Then on the right side, a fourth pattern, and on the left side, a fifth pattern. To determine how much cover material is required, we'll take some measurements of the motorcycle. Starting from the rear, we'll measure up to the seat. Now from the seat to the windshield. Then from that windshield down to the floor in front. Write those measurements down and add them up. The Evolution fabric that we've selected is wide enough to cover the motorcycle from the left side to the right side. So we add those three measurements together resulting in 163 inches. So we need a panel for the top that is 163 inches in length. We'll then measure from the highest point on the right side and down to the floor. Then on the left side, down to the floor. We'll write those measurements down on paper as well. We didn't show it, but we also measured from the front to the rear. It's 95 inches. Since the Evolution fabric that we're using is 55 inches in width, for the sides we need two panels that are 95 inches in length. Adding those three lengths together results in 353 inches. Divide that by 36 and we need about 10 yards of fabric. Creating a pattern frame is the next step. In order to pattern, we need a frame, and we're going to use 3M strapping tape and double-sided tape to make this frame so we can stick our pattern material to it and mark around it. These panels or patterns will make up our cover. Yours may be slightly different in configuration, but the concept is the same. The process of patterning, simply put, is to determine where a second or adjoining panel will be seamed together. And it's at that location where strapping tape and double-sided tape will be applied. At the passenger seat, we have decided to add another panel of fabric here in an attempt to give the cover more shape. So we will add the filament tape here to act as our future seam. So we want the filament strapping tape to come down almost directly across from that future seam. So we will attach it to the saddlebag at that location, almost making a 65 degree turn there. This tape that we're applying will be the seam location where the top panel will be joined to the side panels. Here we're doing it on the left side of the motorcycle in the same way. In an effort to make patterning a little bit easier, we're going to go from the right mirror to the left mirror with strapping tape as well. Now we'll go back to the seat and we'll apply strapping tape at the back of the uh, driver's seat, right in front of the passenger's seat. Here we will have a second panel that will be seamed together at that location. If the strapping tape doesn't have much surface area to stick to, you may want to adhere another layer of strapping tape over the top to hold it securely in place. This strip of tape across the fender's front is not going to be patterned on it, it's just to hold the other two legs in place. Now double-sided tape or seam stick for canvas, part number 129, can be applied on top of the strapping tape. The idea here is that the seam stick will not come off of stainless steel or leather or vinyl very well, especially if it gets heated. But the strapping tape comes off of almost everything beautifully. So our strapping tape is our base for our double-sided tape. After the double-sided tape is applied, we like to actually rip the double-sided tape rather than cut it. It actually makes it easier to remove the transfer paper, revealing the glue. 
Once the double-sided tape is applied to the strapping tape, we can remove the white transfer paper from the double-sided tape, revealing the glue. We'll first be patterning the top panel. So, in an effort to keep the side panels lined up correctly, we're going to place some marks over top of our strapping tape at key junctions, like here at the front fender, here at the saddlebag where the other panel will be joined, and also on the mirrors. That way we can line up the top panel with the side panels. Our patterning frame is now set up. It's now time to pattern. We'll start by patterning the front panel. We'll call it pattern number one. Here we're using what's called Durascrim pattern material available from Sailrite, and we've cut it to the general size, obviously oversize. We use two helpers to apply this pattern material down as neatly as possible. Once it's in the general position, trim the excess off because it makes it easier to work with the panel, but be sure to leave about six inches extra over the strapping tape. Here at the front, we notice there's quite a bit of shape here, especially due to that headlight. So we're going to create a pleat at that location. So the Duraskrim pattern material is attached very well at the handlebar and at the forward of the fender, and that leaves a lot of excess material in the middle position. So we'll create a fold on the left side and the right side that are basically in line with each other here, right above the headlight. Using office clamps, you can help hold the fold in place. Then we'll take our Sharpie marker and we will mark on both sides of the fold, at the top and at the bottom edge. This will indicate how much fabric we need to take out of the cover. Here, a stitch will be created, thus finishing off what we call a pleat. We will place a few more marks on the pleat to indicate where it goes. Notice that it comes to a point at the top. Notice those marks on both sides of the pleat are directly on top of each other as the pleat is folded. We'll do that to the other side as well. Remember those marks we placed on the fender and at the uh, mirrors? We want to transfer those marks to the pattern material. That will help us to line up the side panels when it comes time to pattern them. We still have a little bit of excess material here that we need to cut away. We'll leave this pattern in place and move on to pattern number two, which is in the middle of the motorcycle. Leaving the first pattern in place, we'll apply double-sided tape over top of it where the double-sided tape holds it in place. Another cut piece of Duraskrim pattern material is placed on top of that and we carefully baste it in place trying to work out as many wrinkles as possible. A second helper is definitely advantageous for this application. The pattern material is too big but we can trim it down after we have it placed on the double-sided tape. Here we're trimming it at the rear end of pattern number two and there's some shape here between the passenger seat and the driver's seat so we cut some slits in the Duraskrim pattern material not going deeper than the actual pattern itself, which allows the Duraskrim to take the shape of the uh, area that it's resting on. Now we will apply double-sided tape on top of where that seam will be located to join the third panel. Now we'll work on pattern number three, which covers the passenger seat and goes all the way to the back of the motorcycle to the floor. Here we're basting that third panel to the second panel over top of that double-sided tape that we applied on the second panel. When we move to the rear of the motorcycle, again there is a lot of shape here. So we're going to create two pleats, one on the left side and one on the right side, to take out the excess material. This is quite acceptable and required. So don't be alarmed if you have to create pleats like this. We try to locate the two pleats, one on the left and one on the right, in the general same position because you will see a stitch here when the cover is finally completed at the rear of the cover. Again, we started with a pattern material that's a little bit too large, so we'll cut away the excess. Now we'll create those dashes on both sides of the pleat to indicate where we will have to cut away and sew this excess material into the cover to give it more shape at that location. So these marks should be directly on top of each other at a few locations along that fold. 
we cut a little bit too much material away at the rear of our motorcycle. So you notice here as we use a L square uh, to mark a line straight down to the floor, we don't have enough pattern material, but uh, we can just follow that line when it comes time to pattern our actual fabric. Now we'll mark on the outside of our strapping tape all along the edge on all of our pattern material that we placed on top of our motorcycle and we will remember to mark each one of the marks that are alongside of it that help us to indicate where the adjoining panels will be. There we marked from the passenger seat to the driver's seat uh, where we will sew a second panel there to give it a little bit more shape. We always recommend that you label each of the panels for identification, but not only that, but we will also know what is the right side and the wrong side. In other words, the outside and the inside of the pattern. No, at the floor, at the rear and the front, we'll use a straight edge and place it over top of our Duraskrim pattern material and just mark a line. That's a good indication of where the floor is. Now here between the second and third panel, we had to lift the third panel off of the uh, second panel and mark it. Hopefully this line will be directly on top of the line that we marked on the rear panel. Yes, our line does line up, as you can see here. Let's move on. And we'll continue to mark the rest of the pattern material, remembering to mark the locations which will help us to join side panels as we go. After evaluating our pattern now for the top of our motorcycle, we believe that we can leave panel 1 and 2 joined together as one complete fabric panel. So we used just regular tape to tape those two panels together. So now instead of having five separate uh, patterned pieces, we will only have four. Now when we get to the front fender, what we will do is we will strike a line straight down using a straight edge, trying to uh, determine where the tire rests. We'll do that on both the right side and the left side. Unfortunately, we cut the pattern material so it doesn't go all the way to the floor. What we'll do is we'll just add a scrap piece of Duraskrim pattern material and tape it in place using regular packing tape. Now it reaches the floor and we can mark the front edge like we did with the rear edge. Now our top pattern is complete. We can do either two things. We can leave the pattern material in place and uh, put double sided tape on top of it or we can remove it carefully without disturbing the strapping tape underneath it. We're going to remove it and then pattern the side panels. We'll now do pattern number four, the right side. After removing the top panel, the double-sided tape stayed on the strapping tape, so we can use it again to pattern this fourth panel or side panel. Again, we tried to cut a Duraskrim pattern material that's a little bit oversized, and we'll begin basting it. And once it's in the general spot, we'll cut away the excess, leaving about six inches uh, before we reach the strapping tape. As you're patterning, remember, you do not want a cover that is so tight that it's difficult to install and remove. So, if you have a little bit of slop in your cover, do not be alarmed by it. However, patterning like this will still result in a gorgeous cover, even if it's a little bit oversized, which we like. Then, using our Sharpie marker, we will mark in the same location along the strapping tape that we did when we marked the top panel that laid over top of our motorcycle. Though that pattern material has been removed, our strapping tape should be in the exact same location. And along the bottom edge of that right side uh, pattern, we will use our straight edge and mark a line right along the floor with the pattern material fairly taut at that location. Now if you notice here, it looks like we're going to have to create another pleat, but we're not going to create that pleat in the pattern material, we'll probably just create it in the actual finished cover when it's done. Because you can install pleats after the patterning is done and after you have all your panels sewn together. Um, so you can still make modifications to the cover by adding pleats if it's still not fitting exceptionally well in some areas. We didn't show it, but here's the pattern on the left side. You want to repeat that procedure 
uh, for the left side uh, because it's slightly different. The motorcycle is actually tilted at a different angle there. So you can't just use the right pattern for the left side. You have to make a whole new one. And in that pattern, we definitely have a large pleat coming down from the mirror. That is expected. So here we are marking where the pleat is located with a few straight lines that are directly across from each other at that fold location, which takes up the excess fabric at the bottom of the mirror. When you're done patterning, don't forget to label the pattern material so you know which side is the correct side or right side and which side is the wrong side. And you also know where the front is and the back is, though it's pretty easy to tell. We'll also be adding seam allowance for particular areas. We'll show that later on when we take the pattern material to the table. Up next, we'll add seam allowance and then cut out those patterns. Now that we have all the patterns, we need to add seam allowance, and seam allowance will vary from edge to edge. For the top panel laying over the motorcycle, we will add a one inch seam allowance to both sides, the right and the left. Here's a drawing of all four of our panels, and in red you can see we want to add one inch seam allowance, and in green we want to add a half inch seam allowance. The idea here is any panels that are sewn together requires a half inch seam allowance, and any pleats a half inch seam allowance. But on the sides of the top panel we want to make sure that the cover fits in a way that won't be too tight. That's why we add a one inch seam allowance there only. This yardstick is about one inch, so it's perfect to use as a guide to place it up against the marks we made on the Duraskrim while it was on the bike. When we were patterning on the bike, we were doing it freehand, so some of these lines are not perfectly straight. So ones that we know that are supposed to be straight, we will just use the uh, lines as a guide and use our straight edge to straighten them out. Now that was the outer edge of one of the top panels, but here at the back edge, we want to add only a half inch seam allowance, whereas on the sides, we want one inch seam allowance. The half inch at the back portion of this uh, pattern is where the passenger sits, uh, between the driver's seat and the passenger seat, so we only need a half inch seam allowance there. Now we're back to the sides again, and here there's a lot of shape, so we'll just make dashes there, and then join the dashes to create our one inch seam allowance for that location. Next, we're going to move on to the top cover over the passenger's seat. And at the seam where we will sew it together to the opposite top panel, we want to add a half inch seam allowance. So that's what we're doing here. Using our ruler to make dashes, and then we'll join the dashes with the line, following the dashes as our guide. For this top panel of the passenger seat, we want one inch on the sides. And here's a pleat. What we'll do is we'll use our yardstick and join the dashes to complete that pleat. But we also need to add a half inch seam allowance for the pleats. Notice that one of the dash marks for this pleat is outside of the line we just struck down. But that's okay. Remember this is a cover and it doesn't have to be form fitting. So you can easily make modifications if some of your lines are off slightly. Now we're marking a half inch in towards the pleat on both sides. Here we'll want to mark a line a half inch away from the original line we just struck down so that we have a half inch of extra material that can be sewn together to form the pleat. Notice the outer edge. The lines on one side of the pleat are not the same with the line on the other side. Even though we're striking a line from side to side to join them up, those will technically be joined together when the pleat is created, and they will pretty much line up perfectly then. Now we want to cut out each of the pleats along the line that we struck a half inch inside of the pleat line. Now we can cut on that outer line all around the perimeter. This is the one inch line for the top panel, the panel that goes over top of the motorcycle. Okay. 
After this one's cut out, next we're going to concentrate on the pattern that goes over the passenger seat. This is the rear pattern that still fits on top of the motorcycle. Here we're working on one of those pleats. Here we need to add a half inch to that pleat. First we marked where the pleat location is, and then we mark a line inside of that a half inch in. You'll notice that on all of our patterns we do not add any seam allowance or hem allowance to the bottom edge. That edge was um, marked against the floor and when we create our hem along that edge we actually don't want the material to be touching the ground. So that's why no seam allowance and no hem allowance is added at that point. And here we are cutting out the opposite side's pleat. And now we'll just cut the remainder of that panel out. Let's move on and show one of the side panels coming up next. The side panels, both the left side and the right side, this is showing the uh, left side, has only a half inch seam allowance everywhere except for obviously along the bottom edge as we discussed earlier. So here we are adding a half inch seam allowance uh, around the perimeter except for the bottom edge. This line is not perfectly straight, so we'll mark four or five inches at a time, moving our straight edge to follow the general shape of this curve. For lines that have a lot of curve, we'll mark freehanded a half inch away from those. This pleat on the left panel is so large that it almost separates the two halves of the left panel. So what we're going to do later on is we will actually trim this uh, pleat all the way to the top edge separating the two halves of this panel to save on cloth usage. We will show that later on in the video. Now we can cut this panel out. We'll want to do the same procedure for the right panel which we will not show. Sayorite carries a lot of great fabrics for cover material. We're going to be using Evolution Block It. This is a weather resistant material that has a very soft backside. The outside surface of this Evolution fabric is lighter in color and it's facing up and our pattern is also facing up. In other words, you can read the writing. Now we're going to use chalk and mark around the outer edges of the pattern material so we can cut it out. Now you can mark it like we are here with chalk or another marking utensil all around the perimeter or later on we're going to show how to cut it out uh, with just the pattern material laying on top without marking it which we believe is a little bit faster. The use of weights whether it be books or the sandbags that we're using here that are encased in a vinyl fabric can help to hold the pattern in place as you mark around the perimeter. As we come to the bottom edge we didn't have enough pattern material so we just extended that line to the bottom edge line which we forgot to cut off earlier. We'll cut that off and trace around that as well. To accomplish this task we have a fairly small table but because we are using some weights on the pattern material and the fabric we can simply pull the fabric to one side or the other to do our patterning. So you don't have to have a huge workspace. Now it's also important sometimes to label the material so you do not get confused. Now all we need to do is take shears and cut it out on the lines that we marked on the Evolution fabric. When we were patterning on the motorcycle we made some lines to help us indicate where adjacent panels of fabric would be located. So we're going to transfer those lines to the fabric using our chalk. In the fabric, areas where there is a pleat, that fabric needs to be cut out. Typically it will always be a triangle of sorts. After all of our pattern material is transferred to the fabric, we will sew the pleats as our first step. Let's move on to our next pattern. Here we're going to use multi-use pins instead of weights to hold down the pattern material to our fabric. This is also helpful when it comes to just cutting around the pattern material. We will not show that here, but we will on a future panel. When we were patterning here, we didn't quite have enough pattern material, so we'll extend that line down to the opposite edge line, so we'll fill that in. 
and here at our pleats we want our pleats to go a little bit deeper than we had pattern material just so that we're safe so we extended those lines slightly here Here's another line that looks like just runs off of the pattern material. So we're going to extend that one as well. We have the fabric. We might as well use it just to be safe. Don't forget to transfer any dashes that were done while the pattern material was on the motorcycle. Here's another one over here. Though we marked the outer perimeter of this uh, pattern everywhere, you can see how easy it is to just use your scissors and cut along the edge of the pattern material as long as the pattern has been pinned in place or held down in place with weights. Here we are cutting out the pleats. Now let's move on to yet another pattern. This is one of the side patterns and it has a very large pleat going all the way to the top. We're actually going to cut this into two separate sections, a forward section and a rear section for this left panel. That way we can save on cloth usage. For this pattern, we're not going to trace around the perimeter. Rather, we're going to pin it to the fabric, the pattern that is, and we're going to cut down the lines. So this is our pleat, which is actually going to separate the panels as we discussed. We'll come back to that panel here in a minute after we cut out this panel. After this panel is cut out, we'll go back to the previous panel that we placed on the floor and we will cut out the pleat without cutting the fabric. Then what we can do is reposition that panel so we get some better cloth usage uh, because we won't be wasting all of this fabric at the front of this panel. There we go. Don't forget to mark any notches and label if you are confused about anything. There we labeled it pleat. Here's another mark. And actually if you want to make sure that you do not lose those marks, you may want to take your scissors and just cut a triangular shape out of those areas. Uh, do not cut deeper than a quarter inch. This is just so we don't lose those marks and we can see them easily when we take them to the sewing machine and sew. We can do that on all panels if you like. At anywhere you placed a notch so that you can join opposite panels. Before we start joining panels together, we need to finish off the pleats. All of our patterns are cut out. It's now time to sew the pleats together. That's the first thing we should do for all patterns. So here is a large pleat. We're applying seam stick for basting tape, part number 129, to one of the edges of our pleat. We want those to be fairly close to that raw edge. Peel off the transfer paper, revealing the glue, and then baste those panels so that outside surfaces are facing each other. You want to baste them so that the outer edges are pretty much lined up with each other. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it has to be very close. The seam stick for canvas sticks beautifully to this evolution block at fabric. Now we'll take it over to the sewing machine. We're going to use the Sayrite Ultrafeed LSC sewing machine with the deluxe 5.5 inch magnetic guide and we'll sew a straight stitch about a half inch away from the raw edge of the fabric. We're starting to sew at the peak portion of the pleat and we will sew a straight stitch about six millimeters in length down the length of that pleat. This is our first stitch of what we call a semi-flat failed seam. Now we will take the fabric and we will place our top stitch in the outside surface and we will fold our fabric back and sew through the half inch tail on the underside. You want to try to keep this stitch about an eighth inch away from the splayed out section of the first stitch that you created. Notice we are pulling the fabric uh, to the left and the right so that it is splayed along that first stitch. We started sewing from the bottom edge and here we're ending at the peak of that pleat and we do some reversing there to lock the stitch in place. That pleat is now complete. And here's what the bottom side looks like. 
Now we want to do that for all other pleats on all the panels that have them. Here we're working on a smaller pleat. It's done in the exact same manner. If you do not want to use seam stick or basting tape for canvas, you can use straight pins and pin assemblies together. Or if you feel confident enough, you can take it to the sewing machine and line it up as you sew. We typically like to use basting tape because it holds everything in place perfectly as we take it to the sewing machine and sew. And since this basting tape is 3 8 inch wide, when we sew our stitch, which is a half inch inside the edge, it will not be visible. As you're sewing these pleats in place, don't worry if the bottom edges don't line up perfectly. In the end, they will probably be trimmed anyway when we finish the bottom edge of this cover. When making a semi-flat filled seam, you need to consider which side the half inch tail will be sewn on. Looking at the outside surface of our fabric, we want the water to run off like this. So our tail on the underside is tucked up towards the highest point of the cover. So the seam creates a shingle effect on the outer surface of the assembly. Here we're scrolling up the material so we can fit it under the arm of the sewing machine. This is the location of the headlight in the middle there. We had excess material. This pleat, or these two pleats, will remove the excess material, making it a better fit around that area. When we finish this top stitch, there is a pleat directly across from this. So watch what we do here. We will go to the end, and we're going to skip forward to that part, and we'll just move the material without cutting our threads to the next pleat. We'll make sure the tail is folded back towards the top of the cover and we'll do some reversing here and sew through to the opposite end or side, I should say. There we go. Now that all our pleats are complete, we just need to sew panels together. We're going to start with the top panels. This is the passenger's seat area and the driver's seat area. We're going to use basting tape along that edge and baste them so outside surfaces are facing each other and edges of the fabric are even with each other as we baste. After it's basted, we'll take it to the sewing machine and sew our first stitch a half inch away from the raw edge of the fabric. Again, we're using the deluxe five and a half inch magnetic guide to do this. And then we will create a top stitch, making again another semi-flat filled seam. Now the seam could just be one stitch. In other words, we could be done with this stitch right now. That's the cheap and quick way to make a cover. But creating a top stitch or a semi-flat filled seam is the more professional way to make a cover. It's your choice. The passenger seat is higher than the driver's seat, so we want water to shed off like this. So our tail on the underside will go towards the right of this cover. Now we create our top stitch. It's now time to join the top panel with one of the side panels. To accomplish this, we're going to apply the double-sided seam stick along one of the edges of the top panel. We'll do this right along the side of that panel, all along its length. Now, if you get to a pleat where the fabric isn't even, simply trim it off so that you can easily follow that edge. Our top panel is laying on the table with its outside surface facing up. Now our side panel can be placed on top of that with its outside surface facing down. In other words, the outside surfaces are facing each other. We'll start at the peak where the mirror is and we'll start to base lining up edges. There is a little bit of shape in some of these edges and you should try to follow that as much as possible. Sometimes when you do that you may get a few little wrinkles in the assembly while you're basting. Don't be alarmed by that. Sometimes cutting out notches can help with those. Now here you notice that our matchup mark is slightly off by about a half inch or so. That is really no big deal. Now here's where we have to take a transition. Notice that we are actually creating small wrinkles in the fabric because of the turn. You can do that or you can cut little slits which will help it to take the turn. But either way works. When we finally get to the bottom edge, this is at the front of the motorcycle, notice the panels don't line up perfectly. 
Again, do not worry about that. We'll be trimming them later on. Here's that transition. A little bit of wrinkles, but it's perfectly fine. Now here's a large transition at the peak where the uh, mirror is. We're going to cut some notches in that uh, material underneath so that it can take the turn. And the notches will allow the fabric to spread a little bit there. There we go. And when we come to the opposite end, you notice our panels aren't perfectly lined up there either. We're off by about an inch and a half. No big deal. That's the bottom edge. Before you take it back to the sewing machine, turn the panel over and check your seam. Make sure everything looks good. If it doesn't, you can make adjustments. That's the beauty of double-sided tape. Now we'll take this assembly to the sewing machine and sew a half inch from the raw edge of the fabric. Again, we're using the Serite Ultrafeed LSC-1 sewing machine and the Deluxe Magnetic Guide. As you sew at major transitions or turns, you need to make sure the material on the underside is laying flat as it's being sewn. When we finally come to the peak where the mirror is located, what we're going to do is we're going to do a little bit of reversing there to lock our stitch in place. Then we're going to bury our needle in the fabric assembly at the peak, lift our presser foot, roll the fabric assembly around so we can sew down the opposite leg, lower our presser foot, and then continue to sew. We pivoted on the needle. Again, just make sure the fabric on the underside is laying flat as it's being sewn. We need to think about how we're going to sew this top stitch. We want water to run off the top and over to the side panel. So we want the half inch tail on the underside to be pointing towards the top and not the side panel. Now we'll sew our top stitch an eighth inch from the splayed open portion of this seam. Remember to pull the panel slightly with your hands both left and right. Display the fabric open as you sew it. And occasionally check to be sure the tail on the underside is facing the correct direction. For us that's towards the right. After some sewing you'll begin to notice that you can feel that half inch tail on the underside as you're sewing. So typically you don't have to always check on the bottom side. You can just feel for it. At the peak where the mirror is located it will seem like there are quite a few wrinkles here, but that's because there's a lot of fabric here. Your job is to make everything lay as flat as possible and be sure the tail is tucked in the right direction as you sew here. Just go slowly and try to follow that splayed open portion of the fabric, in other words your first stitch. Don't worry if it looks like it's a little bit wrinkled, it'll look great in the end. Now the process for the other side panel is done in exactly the same way. We're going to go through this quickly. Here we're applying double sided tape to the other side. This is the top panel. Then we will lay the opposite side so the outside surfaces are facing each other starting again at the peak. We'll base down one side then base down the other side. Then we'll take it to the sewing machine and follow that exact same procedure that we just showed. Let's move on. Now's the time to test fit the cover and make more pleats if necessary. The cover has been sewn all together. We'll take it to the motorcycle and fit it over the motorcycle to check for a fit. It definitely fits onto the motorcycle easily, which is good, but there's a lot of excess fabric, especially on the right side of the motorcycle. So let's take a look at that. On the left side, when we were patterning, we created a pleat but it looks like we need to create a pleat on the right side as well. So here we're using multi-use pins to create that pleat to take out the excess fabric that we believe is on the right side of the motorcycle. And we started from the mirror and work our way down to the floor. We used multi-use pins to create the fold. Then we will use chalk and mark both sides of the fold. This indicates where we want to sew. And here we are marking the opposite side of that fold. Now we can take this back to the table. And what we want to do is check to make sure that line is directly on top of the line on the opposite side, which it is. 
So as long as those lines are directly on top of each other, all we need to do is cut off the excess material a half inch to the outside of that line. We'll just use a straight edge and mark about a half inch away from that line that we struck while, the, while it was on the bike, and then we'll use our scissors and cut away the excess, cutting through both layers at the same time. You may be asking, what is that small triangular piece at the top near where the mirror is located on this side? Well, that's where we didn't have enough material, so we just sewed in another piece. That's completely acceptable. Now we'll base those two halves together with outside surfaces facing each other. We can now take it to the sewing machine and sew this pleat together. We're sewing a half inch from the raw edge of the fabric for our first stitch of a semi-flat filled seam. Then we will sew our top stitch of the semi-flat filled seam. We're going to start sewing this top stitch from the bottom edge up. Being sure to sew through the half inch tail on the underside. keeping our stitch about an eighth inch from the splayed open portion of that seam. Let's move on. Now we can take that cover over to the motorcycle again and check for the fit and mark the bottom edge. That's what we're doing here. We are marking the bottom edge about an inch up from the floor. We'll do this all around the perimeter so that we know exactly where we need to create a hem. This hem will take up some excess fabric. We really don't want the fabric to be directly on the ground anyway. So marking up a one inch or so and then creating a hem will take up uh, enough fabric so that the cover will probably be about three to four inches from the ground. If you'd like it to be closer, you could mark the fabric on the floor. Then when the hem is created, it'll be about one to two inches from the ground. We've cut away all the excess material according to the marks that we just made. Now we're going to mark a line that is four inches from the raw edge of the fabric. Here we're using the Sarac Canvas Patterning Ruler to do that. If you don't have this, you can use a ruler and just make dashes about every few inches that are four inches up from that raw edge. In this sleeve at the bottom edge, we'll have a drawstring, or for us, a shock cord. We're going to install the opening for this drawstring or shock cord at the rear of the motorcycle. Working on the underside of the fabric, because the underside is facing up, we've marked the center of that back panel, and we will mark three inches from the centered location, so this is a six inch mark from mark to mark. This is the creation of the point where you can gain access to the drawstring that will be inserted in the sleeve. What we'll do now is we'll find the center of that sleeve, so we'll fold it up to that mark and crease it at the center location. So this is our center of our future hem or sleeve. Now at those marks we will cut into the fabric but do not go past the center fold where we marked it there. Try to stay around a half inch away from that. So we've cut out a rectangle. Now we'll place scrap fabric, a rectangle that's at least one inch larger than our cut out opening all around the perimeter and we'll pin it in place so that outside surfaces are facing each other. The cover is laying with the wrong side facing up so the right side is facing the tabletop and our scrap fabric has the right side facing up so outside surfaces are facing each other. Now that it's pinned in place we can take it to the sewing machine and we want to sew about a half inch from that rectangular cutout that we've made on the left side, the top side, and the right side. So here we have to remove one of the straight pins because the presser foot will hit it. And we will sew to the opposite side. At the corner we will bury our needle. We will lift our presser foot and roll the fabric assembly around to sew down the opposite side. Good. 
and be sure you do reversing at the beginning and the end of your stitch to lock your stitch in place. Then we'll cut away the excess material of that scrap piece that we sewed on along the bottom edge. Then we will cut out the rectangle just like we did before on the actual cover. This leaves our scrap fabric with a perimeter sewn around the rectangle that we cut out earlier and it will create a finished edge for the exiting point of our shock cord or leech line, whichever one we decide to put in it. At the corners of that, create a miter cut, but do not go deeper than your stitch that you created. Now we'll fold that fabric back, creating a finished edge that is reinforced, and we will pin it in place. Now when we get to the short edges, it will look like it's a little bit more difficult, but you can force the material back there as well and pin it. All right, now for the small corners. Watch what we do. And that is all there is to it. Now we'll pin it in place. And we'll repeat that for the other side as well. We'll then take this back over to the sewing machine and we will sew about a quarter inch around the perimeter. When we get to the corner, we will bury our needle, lift our presser foot, roll the assembly around and sew down the other side. Now the way we inserted our multi-use pins is kind of a pain. We have to remove them the way we did it. So we remove that pin and we will start sewing and then when we come upon the second multi-use pin we'll have to remove it as well. And as always, do some reversing at the end of your stitch and at the beginning that we did earlier. And now we have a reinforced opening for the insertion of a shock cord or a line. We will cut away some of the excess here because this is where it will fold back. Now we have an opening for the tensioning of our shock cord or our line that runs through the sleeve. We will take double-sided tape and baste along the line that we struck on the material. This is where we will create our hem. We will fold the fabric back to this point and baste it in place. Then we will sew around the entire perimeter. We'll peel back the transfer paper, revealing the glue. But before we start to fold it, we need to put in either our shock cord or our line. Here we're just pinning it in place so that we don't accidentally pull it through the sleeve as we create it. As we base the sleeve in place, try to keep the shock cord or line at the fold edge of the hem. That way we will not accidentally sew it in place and it keeps it away from the double-sided tape. This area of the cover has quite a bit of shape and because of that our hem is not going to want to fold over neatly without some wrinkles. So we're going to actually add the wrinkles to the hem. They won't be visible because they're on the inside of the cover and they will help us to accommodate the shape change in the cover. So don't worry about those at all. At this location the hem takes a rather sharp turn. Because of that we'll create two large folds right near the seam that was created. This will result in our hem laying nice and flat, and we will just sew those folds in place when we sew around the perimeter of the hem. Since we're using shock cord, we're actually going to tension the cover once it gets to the motorcycle, so we don't need a lot of excess cord at the exiting point. Now we can take it back to the sewing machine and sew around the perimeter, securing that hem in place. We're doing some reversing at the beginning and we sew about an eighth inch to a half inch away from the edge. The beauty of the Evolution fabric is that it does not unravel much, so you don't have to worry about using a hot knife or creating a double 
hold him. To aid or help in determining what side of the cover is what, we're going to use a Sayerite woven sewn in tag along the front of the cover. That way we never get confused about uh, which side of the cover is what. The Sayerite tag also declares to the world that you sewed it up yourself. To tension the shock cord, we're going to add a barrel lock cord closure. Our cover is now complete. Now we will place it on the motorcycle and tension up our sleeve at the bottom edge with the shock cord. Here we used a barrel lock closure and we can pull out the excess shock cord until we're happy with how the bottom edge is fitting around the motorcycle. As you pull cord or shock cord out of the sleeve, you will have to distribute the wrinkle around the perimeter of the cover. We're going to pull out quite a bit of shock cord here to make it a nice, firm, and tight fit. After we have it in the position that we'd like, we can cut off the excess shock cord. The motorcycle cover is now complete. Coming up next is the materials list and the tools that we used to make this motorcycle cover. Evolution Blocket fabric is great for covers like this, but Sayrite also sells other fabrics that would work great for motorcycle covers like this. If you have questions about a particular cover fabric, give us a call or email us. We're glad to help. For more free videos like this, be sure to check out the Sayrite website or subscribe to the Sayrite YouTube channel. Don't forget to click the bell at the YouTube channel to be notified of new videos when they become available. I'm Eric Grant, and from all of us here at Sayerite, thanks for watching.